Okay, welcome back to the tutorial on Arrow MIDI. Um, I just wanted to go a little bit more over the Leap Motion controller and how it works with these action cards. Um, so if I put in two hands, you'll see that the right hand is red and the blue hand is colored, I'm sorry, and the left hand is colored blue. So you can actually do certain things depending on what hand it thinks it sees. Um, if there's two hands in there, it will always go, okay, which is the leftmost hand? That is the left hand. But it does have some issues detecting which hand is which. Oops. I'm sorry. Um, the... So... If you put a hand in, it'll attempt to see where the, f the thumb is in relationship to the fingers, and it'll attempt to figure it out, and usually it gets it right. So when it's white, you'll see, you might see it white for a brief second. That means it doesn't know what it is. Um, but when both hands are in, it's pretty clear. You can even put in just two fingers or one finger on each hand, and it figures it out if there's two. But if you try and put in one finger, it just really can't tell what that finger is. Um, so it might take a couple fingers uh, to figure it out. Um, anyways, uh, so I could actually make this action card only be, or I could make all these sets, I could change their gesture so that they're left-handed gestures. So only my left hand can trigger these sets from playing. So now I need my left hand uh, from one to two fingers in order to trigger a set. So my right hand, it can have two fingers. It's going up and down, rotating. It's doing all that. It's not triggering those sets. But my left hand, as soon as I go to two fingers, Boom, there we go. Again, my right hand, two fingers, can't do anything, turns it off with my my left hand. So, and then my, I could make it so that only the effects can be triggered with the right hand as well. So here we go. Right hand four to five fingers, I'm rotating it, left hand is moving, it's not changing the parameter. You see it wiggle a little bit, and that's just because, um, well, I'm sorry, you see it, it's not wiggling at all because I have two fingers on my right hand. If I put it up to five fingers, it'll change it. And so I can trigger sets with my left hand and change the actual effects with my right hand. Um, the only problem you might run into is that if it misidentifies a hand, then you have an, an issue. So um, usually if it sees two hands, it'll get that right though. Um, some more, more things you can do with action cards. Um, there, uh, oh, of course there's the re-trigger which I can show you here. The retrigger um, allows you to trigger an action card and continue to trigger it. So I'm gonna just put this on my rotate um, clockwise event. Here we go. So it's retriggering it right now. Let go. It's at one eighth notes. I'm going to go into my effects and I'm going to show you more about these different uh, parameters. Uh, so we have our type of, I'm sorry, no effects, it actions. We have our type of action, start, end. So start is what 
what happens on the start of an action card. End is what happens on the end of an action card. And an action card will end when another action card in its group starts. So, for example, if set 1 is playing and set 2 starts, if you have an end for set 1, that will happen. So then you got x, y, z, x, y, and then z is forward and backwards. And then, of course, roll is from left to right, like an airplane banking. Pitch is like an airplane diving or climbing. And yaw is actually like an airplane rudder pedals uh, rotating um, from left to right but keeping the palm flat. Uh, also known as rotating around the Y axis for those geeks out there. All right. Um, so more on this. Uh, there's the MIDI controller number, if it is a MIDI controller. The train, this is to train your DAW. You have to hit stop when you're done. The range, uh, what values it will send. So if you only wanted to send um, a very narrow range, maybe 120 MIDI CC 120 to 127 you can you can choose that by changing it to 120 um, you'll see that in the effects um, on the bottom um, in the status bar area you'll see that um, the roll is almost is always well oh I set it to 127 oops I should make it 120 to 127 that's probably better so now the roll you'll see down on the bottom bottom down here you'll see 120 to 127 so left is 120 to 127 there are also other options let's put this back down to zero the other option is the snap. Now the snap is is basically it's it's almost like quantization of in the range. So if I set this to 20, that means it'll use ev it will only essentially count from 20 in the range. So it'll trigger 0, 20, 40, 60 and so on. So I can go 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 100 Sorry, not 90. And that's that. Um, you can. That's kind of helpful if you want to make um, an effect that isn't continuous, and you can get some interesting uh, um, sounds that way. Here we have our um, exponential um, slow, our exponential fast. This is our reverse, and this is the mirrored. The mirrored means that um, it's going to split the range, the MIDI range of 0 to 127, in, and duplicate it. I'm sorry, duplicate it so that on one side it's going to be, uh, you'll see down in the bottom, 0 to 127. And then it's going to flip and go backwards all the way down to zero again. So zero when it's rotated, sorry, when the hand is rotated um, all the way to the right. Let me just show it this way. Um, and then zero, or it's actually, sorry, zero when it's all the way to the right, 127 in the center, and then rotated to the left at zero again. And of course, you could flip that so that it would be now it's reversed as well so now it's it's 127 on all the way to, banked to the left and then when it's flat it's zero and then to the right it's 127 so there's different uh, ways you can send this MIDI data basically for all the different parameters now, there are also some other interesting things you can do. The next thing I wanted to show you about action cards uh, is that you can um, 
do different things with them besides just um, playing MIDI notes. So I've got my left hand in there. You can see there's my hand, my fingers. And I can go and I can create a start action. Now instead of being a CC button, I can also do a CC controller, which is just a specific CC data message. Um, I can do multiple CC controllers. Um, I can delete them. Um, I can also do this thing where I can not track fingers if I don't want to see the fingers. So on the start, I can make it so that it doesn't track fingers. I have to assign a gesture first. So if I do that, I do that, suddenly I have my hand here without any fingers. I mean, you still see the number of fingers, but you don't see the actual fingers. I can create another gesture, which will be rotate counter, make it one second, point one second, sorry. And then on this action, I can make the start track my fingers. So I can do that. And then if I want to untrack, I'm sorry, untrack, track, untrack, track. So one of the things that fingers can be used for is to trigger cubes. So I can create a cube and then I can put my finger into the cube and trigger the cube. If I don't want to trigger the cubes for whatever reason, I can go back into that mode. Boom. No trigs are no nothing is accidentally triggered. Now, I can also make it let's just do a swipe down. I can make it so that my hand uh, is treated like a finger. And on the end, I can make it hand is finger off and start. Um, I will now turn off the fingers as well. So this will actually make it so that my hand is a finger. That makes sense. Oh, but I'm accidentally triggering gestures. So one thing that you can do to do that, to fix that, is to make it so that you know gestures can only be triggered with four to five fingers, or just some range that you want to use to make them safer. Of course, you can also change the length of time for a, a gesture. So I have four to five fingers. I swipe down. I go to one finger. And I'm not going to accidentally trigger any gestures. I can go into my cube with one finger, which is actually my hand. That's that on more advanced action card editing. Thanks for watching.